Let me call to order the September 20 meeting of the Goodyear Planning and Zoning Commission and ask that you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Does the record show that all members are present except Vice Chair Joanne Osborne? Are we expecting her? Coming. She's coming. She's coming. Okay. She's just left. Okay. First item on our agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes of the special meeting for the Planning and Zoning Commission held on August 16, 2006. That was the regular meeting, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. Regular meeting. Okay. You have the minutes before you. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? Mr. Chairman, I, I have uh, two comments on minutes that I'd like to make. Um, concerning the August 2nd meeting, um, I would like to publicly thank the Chairman, um, Mr. Horseman, for um, supporting my position on tall buildings with the city center plan. And uh, concerning the August 16th meeting, I would like to uh, formally thank Commissioner Osborne for ensuring that the hog rendering plant and the crematorium <laughs> have a position near the landfill in uh, the Sonoran Valley when and if that happens. And those are my comments on the meeting. I, I watched, I've been, I'm back and I've watched the meetings. <laughs> Let the record show that uh, Vice Chair Osborne has joined us. And I'll move that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of August 16th. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> the next item on our agenda is public comments. If you would like to speak to any of the cases this evening, we'd ask you to fill out a, a uh, card so that we will uh, know who would like to speak. It's by no means exclusive. If you decide that you'd like to speak, uh, even though you didn't fill out a card, we'll certainly give you that opportunity. And. Uh, And if there's anyone that would like to address the commission on anything not on the agenda, we would invite you to do that at this time. Hearing none, next item is disclosure of ex parte <coughs> communications. Is there any commissioner that would like to report ex parte communications? I did meet with uh, Mr. Jones and, uh, and Karen Keith regarding the uh, Wood Corporate Center on uh, Monday and would like to, uh, to disclose that. Any other? Okay, then we'll move on to new business. Case 06-200-00003. Estrella Commons Rezone Public Hearing to consider a request to rezone 180 acres generally located at the southeast corner of Estrella Parkway in Interstate 10 from the Ur Agricultural Urban AU District to the Preliminary Planned Area Development PAD District to allow 45 acres of medium high density residential and 100 acres of, a, of low medium density residential. The applicant of is uh, Ed Bull of Bir Birch and Cracciolo and staff presentation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. <coughs> um, I'll begin with some background information regarding the site. The uh, aerial that I put on the overhead is obviously to some uh, quite dated, but it's still a 
I use it to create kind of a contextual map in relation to the situation of this particular site. The site being presented to you is, as you mentioned, about 180 acres. To the southeast is the single-family neighborhood known as Rancho Mirage. To the southwest, and although you don't see any building footprints here, is Estrella Crossroads, which is a general commercial development currently under construction. A few of the retail establishments have already been completed. Directly across the street is another commercial development that is currently being graded before actual vertical construction, and that is Parkway Village. And, of course, we have Walmart as well across the street to the west, as well as the Safeway Center. I mentioned Estrella Crossroads. The applicant who has interest in this particular project also came before you several months ago for another project, a proposed project known as Goodyear Centerpoint, located just north across from Interstate 10. As you mentioned, the applicant is proposing a rezoning from its current designation, which is agricultural urban. As for the general plan designations, and this is page 5-5 in the PAD booklets, which I've attached to my staff report, the general plan designations are as such. 30 acres is designated for a community commercial. We have 100 acres for low-medium density residential, which is anywhere between 4 to 6 units to the acre, and 50 acres for medium-high density residential. So the applicant is proposing a rezone, as I mentioned. There's actually two components to this rezone. The part of the proposal before you is a rezone from the current designation, designation which I mentioned is agricultural urban, to a final PAD area. There's another rezoning proposal for the preliminary PAD area, which is about 30 acres. The difference between these two designations, or I should say these two project areas, is that the final PAD area includes exclusively the residential portion of this development known as Estrella Commons. The preliminary PAD area will be more of the mixed-use component to this development, which will include commercial, some office, retail, and some ancillary residential component to that as well. There's a greater level of detail provided in this PAD packet for the final PAD area, which the staff found acceptable, whereas for the preliminary PAD area we would need a little bit more detail to rezone that area to a final PAD, and that should be coming forward after approval of the preliminary PAD. So what the applicant is proposing is a mixed residential and commercial development, and incidentally this is the conceptual master plan on page 5-6 in the zoning ordinance, known as Estrella Commons. The area in purple, which is about 30 acres, which constitutes the preliminary PAD portion of this proposal, is the commercial component, as I spoke to you about, and that will be known as the district. The remainder of the area, which entails the final PAD portion, is a mixed residential, which, as you'll see later, includes single-family detached and detached, as well as some multifamily components. The conceptual lotting plan, or the conceptual master plan that you see before you, shows 1,200 units, residential units, for this development, which is at about 6.6 units to the acre. However, the overall density for this project will be capped at 8.3 units to the acre. 
if you look at pages 6, uh, 2, and 6, 3 of the, uh, the attached PAD packet, what you'll find is there's uh, about 11 different types of uh, housing products uh, proposed for this development geared towards a more uh, traditional neighborhood uh, type of development. Um, there's a diverse palette of, of housing products being offered. Uh, I mentioned some of them uh, generally, but there will be uh, characteristics such as uh, the two-pack two -pack type of uh, orientation, which will uh, I'll later defer uh, to the applicant to uh, explain these products a little further, but also uh, the townhomes uh, and uh, the row towns, or if I'm said it correctly, the row town, uh, which is kind of a brownstone type of uh, uh, residential uh, unit. And this. Uh, Page 5-7 uh, kind of shows you how these housing products would be uh, distributed uh, throughout the development. Um, and, and this map can be kind of cross-referenced with the table <coughs> that I, I spoke to you about earlier on page 6-2. Um, but what I should note here is that the, the lower density uh, products, um, particularly, particularly uh, the type that is labeled 1R, which is a single-family detached, uh, would be generally concentrated to the south over by the, uh, the existing uh, residential development, uh, that being Rancho Mirage. The multifamily component will be further to the uh, northeast, and that is fairly consistent with the, uh, the general plan, which designates this area to the northeast as uh, medium, de medium high density residential. And of course, I mentioned the, uh, the the, excuse me, the commercial component uh, to the west. Um, page 5-10 kind of shows you the overall uh, open space framework for this development. There's uh, about 17 and a half acres uh, that would be earmarked, uh, that would be dedicated uh, open space which is over uh, a little over 11 percent of the project area. This includes a central open space known as the Village Green, and uh, it would also include uh, active, passive, other active and passive uh, open space uh, locations as well. The streets, and I'll just show you the circulation map. The streets within this development would be entirely uh, private. They would be maintained by the developer. Um, if you'd like, you could take a look at the, uh, the appendix of this um, PID packet, which shows the, the cross sections uh, and how they deviate from the uh, engineering design standards. But it, it's the, the, you'll notice that the streets are designed to kind of promote that, condu uh, that traditional neighborhood uh, element that this development is proposing. I should, uh, incidentally, I should mention that there would be uh, three ingress, egress points in this development, one of which is currently existing at uh, Roosevelt and Estrella Parkway, and currently there's a signal there right now. And stipulation 32, which uh, I could point out later, uh, implies that there would be a, a signal located at the proposed uh, street, tentatively named A Street, um, at Estrella Parkway, and there would be a stop sign place at the southern ingress egress at uh, Van Buren Street. Phasing would, uh, the phasing would uh, generally occur in uh, two phases. The first would include the, uh, the uh, construction of the infrastructure in phase one, or I should say the final PAD area, which is the residential component. As for the actual housing products and when they would be constructed, that would be dependent on uh, uh, market, market conditions at the time. And the second phase would in, uh, entail the uh, preliminary PAD area, which is the commercial component known as, known as the district, as I said earlier. Um, there was a citizen review meeting uh, conducted on August 22nd. 
where a number of uh, residents, about uh, five or six residents, had attended, primarily from the uh, uh, Rancho Mirage neighborhood. There were there were a few concerns, uh, which I've explained in the staff report, and they were addressed by the uh, by the applicant. Um, Stip, uh, so I should say at this point that staff is recommending approval of this uh, pre-PAD and final PAD proposal contingent on the 34 stipulations before you. Um, I should mention at this point um, earlier before the meeting uh, today uh, staff and the applicant uh, took another look at uh, a few of the stipulations, uh, particularly stipulation 17. 19, 21, and 34. Let me just start with 24. All that happened there, excuse me, 34. Uh, what happened there was um, there was some extraneous information in that stipulation that got uh, repeated, and so um, I've struck out, struck out that uh, that language. Um, as for uh, stipulations 17 and 21. Um, the original stipulations that are in the packet are uh, boilerplate stipulations that usually apply to single family detached uh, uh, plats. Um, these standard stipulations wouldn't allow the flexibility uh, to provide the types of uh, housing that this development would be proposing, particularly the two pack uh, and uh, a lot of the, uh, the town home and row. Uh, Road Town uh, housing products that are proposed. So that language, uh, the languages for 17 and 21 were, were modified. Um, and for, uh, I should also mention that stipulation 19 was uh, also revised to clearly indicate what the minimum requirement uh, for, uh, for uh, noise abatement was or noise abatement is uh, for this type of uh, development. And this is stipulation number 19 is basically derived from the zoning ordinance. That basically concludes my comments. The applicant is here as well to uh, provide you some more information, particularly about the housing products if you need. But I'm available to take any questions at this point. Thank you, Mr. Farhan. Any questions of staff? I just have a question. With regard to the Bullard Wash area, is that going to be fenced in or is it going to be open so that there's some um, ingress and ingress to that, mm -hmm. a flow into that area that they're redoing? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, um, and the applicant, cor correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, as far as I know, it, it is to be enclosed, but there will be some access provided to Bullard Wash from the development. Unless I missed it, I didn't catch the uh, open space percentage and if that was um, taken care of within here. Yeah, the open space percentage, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Osborne, um, is at 11 percent. Um, so 17 and a half acres, and that's just dedicated open space alone. I did see the 11 percent. Is that what? Is that adequate? Yeah. Uh, that meets the. Uh, that means. That actually exceeds the uh, minimum requirements for open space for this type of development. And does that include the pool area? I believe so. So will that pool be then? This maybe for the applicant. Pool will then be community pool. For it will be a community pool to be used by the residents within this development. And regarding the um, the two-story homes uh, stipulation, actually you hit on it, I think, with uh, 22, 21, mm -hmm. no more than three two-story homes t side by side. Usually we follow that with the, you know, two one-stories. Is that not applying here because there's not a whole lot from the package? It doesn't seem to be a whole lot of one-story type of homes. Is that why this isn't in here? Correct. Uh, the if you look further on those, number twenty-one, um, it does make reference to the areas that are, I guess, where the underlying uh, land use or residential. 
designation is 1R, and that is those are the more, uh, uh, dare I say, uh, more of the conventional type of single family detached where this particular stipulation can be applied to. Okay. So a percentage of really this whole development is pretty much two story because of all the Correct. two packs, four packs, multi, and then. Correct. Thank you. Just to answer. Um, you mentioned that all the streets were private streets. Um, as our fire department, I, I, I'm assuming that the streets are built to city standards, at least to be able to get emergency vehicles through. Correct, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Gelser. Uh, that was discussed to some extent, and. Um, with engineering along with the, the fire department, and they have allowed the, the minimum 20-foot <coughs> clearance for emergency vehicles uh, in the alleys as well, not just the right. private streets. That, I, that was where I was going right. with that on the alleys. Right. And then the, the second question is um, in the, and this maybe will save for the applicant, um, they talk about a phasing plan um, where phase one will consider the infrastructure of the residential neighborhoods and all the final PAD areas, and then phase two will consider the infrastructure to support the preliminary PAD areas. Um, when and what is the timetable for, I thought I read something that the single family houses were going to be developed first and then we were going to move along, but I wasn't sure how the phasing was going to work on this. Yeah, probably a good idea to defer that to the applicant. Okay, we will, works for me. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Mr. Bay. Uh, uh, kind of follow up on Mr. Gelser's question about private streets. Uh, in uh, previous uh, requests, we've always asked for a stipulation that uh, informs the home purchaser that these streets are not city standards and that those responsibilities will be those of, of the developer or uh, my understanding is it becomes the uh, associations or the residents requirements to maintain that street once once they moved in there uh, so we typically have a stipulation for that but I don't see that in here is that because they do meet city streets meet city standards and the city would be willing to take them over no uh, Chairman Horseman, uh, Commissioner Bay, uh, quite honestly, I'm not familiar with that stipulation, okay. but uh, that's something that's usually indicated in the, uh, the CCNRs. Uh, you know, they're told up front that they'd be responsible for maintaining the streets and whatever infrastructure is intended to be privately maintained. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Bay, we can add that stipulation. Um, okay. Mr. Brooke. A question. Regarding uh, the existing commercial, as I remember, the last pad that was uh, on the east side of the existing commercial is the car wash, right? I don't believe so. No. It wasn't the car wash? Not, none that I recall. Entire store. Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner DeBroker, uh, I was just reminded uh, the straight of crossroads development to the south, right at the corner there at uh, Van Buren Estrella Parkway, there is a Fletcher, Fletcher, <coughs> excuse me, a throat's going dry. Fletcher uh, Auto and Tire is currently under construction and soon to be under construction is a, a Tudor time. Okay. Well, the question I was getting at was uh, whatever the situation is there, should the houses that are abutting that commercial be flipped to the east and have the road go up that side for noise, uh, noise abatement? Um, uh, Commissioner Broker, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, the uh, Australia, when the Australia Crossroads development uh, came before the commission, um, 
we did explore some options as far as mitigating the proximity of these two uses, and I believe what we stipulated for Australia Crossroads is that, that, that there be at least some 36-inch box trees planted between Australia Crossroads and this development, although there were no, uh, no stipulations addressing any, any roads. Okay. So th there isn't a noise problem for the residences that are next to, adjacent to uh, the commercial. Uh, I wouldn't anticipate that, but the one of the stipulations, in that being stipulation 19, um, the revised stipulation 19, uh, we are we would be requiring the developer to construct those homes in a manner in which uh, any you know extraneous noise doesn't exceed 45 decibels which is the minimum standard for, for the city. Okay, okay. I, I'm only expressing a concern. Sure. I really like this project, mm -hmm. and the only concern that I have is if you have residences immediately adjacent to a tire distributor, repair, and uh, rotation, etc. there's going to be quite a bit of noise mm -hmm. associated with that. And I only raise the question, is it possible to move the, that street off of Van Buren to the west, flip the houses next to the residences at uh, the existing uh, Rancho Mirage. So you have residence to residence rather than residence to the backside of a, a facility. That's the only question I raise. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have one question. The, uh, the Village Green, is any part of that uh, for uh, water retention purposes? Correct. Yes, it is. Okay. So <clears throat> the, uh, the area to the west of the pool is uh, for retention. Correct. Although as, as, to, it's, it's turf and uh, for retention and when it's dry it's available for play fields and... Right, although I'm not sure how much of it is to remain high and dry. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Thank you, Farhan. Mr. Bull. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Ed Bull, 702 East Osborne. Uh, I'm here on behalf of, of uh, Evergreen. Uh, Evergreen, as you know, has a couple divisions under their umbrella, uh, both a commercial division and a residential division that work very well to marry them together on this particular development. You're familiar with Evergreen and other things that they've done throughout the valley, things that they've zoned and have under construction here in the city. So uh, I think you probably don't need additional introduction with respect to Evergreen and, and their interest in quality. Very clearly, Evergreen and staff have worked hand in glove on pulling a lot of pieces of the puzzle together on this particular development. Uh, we appreciate staff's recommendation. Uh, we, we certainly accept staff's stipulations 1 through 34 with the modifications that Farhad just went over with you here this evening. Uh, in essence, as Farhad recap for you, this is, uh, it's a creative, vibrant, mixed-use community that brings a lot of things together on this site uh, and does it in a manner with appropriate transitions from the southeast to the northwest. Uh, and does it in a location which, and in a manner which is very consistent with your general plan and we hope with the city's vision for this particular piece. Uh, we do request your approval in accordance with staff's recommendation in those 34 stipulations for the modifications. You have a complete book. You have a complete staff report. I think Farhad went through a detailed presentation with you. Uh, there's two or three questions in there I think that kind of got deferred to me a little bit that I'll address. but. 
other than that, do you want me to make a full presentation? Because I don't want to sing to the choir at the same time. I don't want to um, skip over a presentation if you need one. I, if it's not you, Mr. Bull, I would really like to hear from the proposed builders or who's going to be the residential developer. I know Evergreen Devco is going to do the master the whole thing. I want to I want to hear from who's building the houses or at least hear some something more than I've read. Okay. All right. Well, let me touch on some of the questions then and circle back to that as, as well if, if I may and, and I won't go into a full bone presentation but we can fill in as many gaps as you need to along the way between either my comments or people here from Evergreen or from uh, from uh, one of our planners, Ron Crater, who's here, who's very uh, versant in this type of development as well. Uh, with respect to a question that was asked about uh, private streets and and you know, making sure people know that they're private streets and if they ever wanted them to become public streets and that type of thing, it's already touched on uh, to some extent in Stipulation 23. Uh, in addition to that, though, I think Harvey indicated that uh, staff could add a stipulation saying that we disclose that they're private streets. Uh, we have no problem with that additional stipulation. Uh, obviously, it would be shown that way on the plat. It could be shown that way in the CCNR, so that's, that's no issue at all. Um, with respect to the question about whether or not there's a car wash in the, in the commercial development that's already underway, uh, no, there's not. With respect to the Fletcher, which is under construction, that is sub located substantially to the west of the eastern property line of that commercial development. So it's substantially west of the uh, residential site that we're talking about here. In addition to that, as you may recall from a couple years ago, more or less when we were here, as I recall on that commercial corner, uh, the commercial corner has obviously building setbacks along the east property line. It has a masonry wall along the east property line, uh, landscaping on the commercial side, uh, landscaping on the residential side. And that when you look at, in fact, I may I'd like to grab a bigger board. When we look at a, at a blow up of what we're talking about here tonight, this, this is the commercial corner that the questions are about. Fletcher's actually here is where it's at. This was uh, envisioned as over in this area as being a daycare center, and I believe that's what it's intended to be. Obviously, there's this little blue thing is actually a city well site. Then we have a bunch of trees and so on in this area. So you have a combination of uses, setbacks, masonry wall, uh, landscaping on both sides of the wall and so on. So it's set up in a very compatible kind of setting along this property line. The street location itself was worked and reworked and reworked uh, in a variety of different scenarios and for a whole lot of reasons that we can get into more detail if, if, if you'd like. This is really where it works best and where it needs to be for a variety of, of reasons and where it needs to come out. So we believe that we've been very compatible in here with, with what's appropriate uh, with the interface with this future commercial. In addition to that, uh, as you may recall from the stipulations, stipulation 22 uh, is one of your standard stipulations that talks about commercial disclosure. You know, sometimes we're disclosing an airport or we're disclosing ag uses or disclosing this or disclosing that. Uh, number 22 talks about uh, among other things, disclosing to future residents the proximity of commercial in the area. So we, we believe, at least from our perspective, we covered that from a variety of different aspects. Uh, with respect to the, uh, the question about wanting to hear from the home builder, uh, we can't have a home builder talk with you tonight because there's not home builders under contract to buy these parcels. Uh, Evergreen Communities is the uh, residential entitlement and development entity under the Evergreen umbrella. Uh, Evergreen Communities does not build houses. 
they contract with home builders that will build the houses just like they've done on a, a similar kind of development uh, called uh, uh, Higley Park, which is in Gilbert, which uses some of, some of these same types of uh, urbanism techniques and has brought builders in to build products that are similar to some of the products that are in this booklet. Uh, this booklet provides information which between the development standards and the design guidelines, uh, representative examples, and all of that needing to go through staff review as well as far as the product review uh, provides a great deal of assurance that what we're talking about here uh, is something that will fit within those various boxes that have been defined and is something that not only the city but Evergreen will be monitoring as well to make sure that we're really dealing with quality, diversity, creativity, uh, those types of traits that we believe are very important in this kind of setting. I, 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 have, I have a couple of quick questions and I want to make a comment. Um, could you hold up your chart again, Mr. Bull? Mm -hmm. um, on the north end of the commercial, at the south corner, you have right, uh, that, yeah, just move your finger up to the northwest. Nope, the other. Northwest? Oh, along the street, right where that street is coming down the middle. Keep going to the right, right, nope, the right head. To the right? right? I'm sorry. Right in the middle of that spot. Where do you want me to go to? Is, is there connectivity here? In other words, does this connect into the does this connect through? Currently, it's not anticipated to be a particular connection. So, is it going to be a pedestrian connection? Could you, could you come up and identify yourself, please? Thank you. Ron Crater, 131 Innovation Drive. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the com uh, commission, uh, we've created a few pedestrian passageways to connect through the neighborhood into the retail center, mostly towards the northerly edge. We're not um, proposing to connect through from the easterly boundary because that's sort of the back of the uh, of the retail. Okay. But we thought that it would be important to connect a couple pathways through from the northerly edge of that retail yeah, site. We're talking about the, the south, the corner of Van Buren and Litchfield Road, that, that corner. But there'll be full connectivity between the residential and the districts. Is that correct? Or is that Yes, Commissioner Gelzer, there will be um, a lot of connectivity between the anticipated commercial and mixed-use development in the district and the residential neighborhoods that are directly adjacent to it. Um, one of the ideas behind the overall plan is to break down the conventional barriers of land use and try to make sure that the streets and the buildings and the greenways uh, create a, a lot of pedestrian connections. Um. Who is responsible for the improvements to the Bullard Wash behind your project? Is that your property or is that our property? Bullard Wash uh, is, as you know, is being developed in a joint fashion between uh, or among the city and McFlood, uh, having started at the south end and working its way north. Um, and, and you will have at least several pedestrian-friendly ways of getting from the residential into Bullard Wash, which is going to be a part, a linear part. Is that correct? Bullard Wash is, in, yes. Bullard Wash is intended to be a linear park, and yes, there's pedestrian connections that will be uh, provided in here conceptually in this type of location. Coming down this central spine would be a very natural location to provide that. Probably up in the north northeast corner. That would be a, a, a good possibility as well. I think the actual identification and finalization of those is something that would best be decided in conjunction with the preliminary plats that we okay. go through on this. But we intend to provide pedestrian, not vehicular obviously, but pedestrian connections to Bullard Wash. 
I guess let me give you my final my my final comments. Um, I read through this this presentation and was um, just it knocked my socks off, and in a very very good way. Um, this is this is a kind of project that I think Goodyear needs, um, and I was I just I I thought you know the the fact that. It's a neighborhood. The fact that the streets are straight, um, the fact that it looks like a, it almost looks like a little bit of England <laughs> transposed into Goodyear. But I mean, it's it is very different than everything that we have seen before this planning commission in a long time. And it's very innovative. Here's my big concern, and and I'll just tell you this for going up in front of city council. Um, the pictures look great. Um, my concern is, will you build what you're showing us? And I have, I will just say that, and I think you need to show pictures of what you're doing, currently doing in Gilbert, and the type of home builders that you're going to have. Otherwise, I think you're going to have some issues. And I will leave it at that. We hear you. And, uh Appreciate the, the compliments and we'll follow up accordingly. Other questions for Mr. Bull for the development team? And I have one. Ms. Osborne. My usual little stipulation in there covered tot lots aren't in there, so I'm assuming that you guys will have covered tot lots. Uh, you know, it's it's always dangerous to correct a commissioner. <laughs> is it in here? In Far House, I, 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 I know it's in here. Okay. I will find it. You know, when you have 400 stipulations, it's easy to miss one. <laughs> it's 27. Or 27. I think, yeah. I think 27. 27. Will, yep. Will, uh, 27. We'd be, happy, canopy. Okay. we'd be happy to agree to number All 27. Right. Right. <laughs> and uh, I will echo Mr. Gelser's thoughts because seeing these wonderful uh, drawings really puts you there. It helps you visualize what you're, you're about to approve. And, um, um, you know, I, I have a hard time driving down the 101 and seeing all those two-story homes are right up against the freeway that are very drab and I would really um, like to pretend that this is going to be something spectacular that we'll be seeing from the freeway and by these drawings that's what it's going to be so um, I guess we're going to hold you to that. Thank you. Just, just want to go on record I kind of want to follow up with uh, Commissioner Geltzer. I realize that there's a proposed uh, bullet wash alignment. Uh, I think that it's important that uh, we make sure that we have a connection from there that will take you under the freeway and over to Center Point and, and eventually Australia Falls. So uh, I don't know if there's any participation on behalf of the builder and the city and the flood control district, but just want to make sure that it was on record that I'd like to see that occur. Meanwhile, I think it's a great project. I like it too, and I'd like to see it move forward. Thank you. Ms. Laura Tom. Yeah, I would just like to echo those thoughts. I, I was looking at the houses, and I know you don't have your builder set up or anything at this point, but it does remind me of some of the historic areas in the, the Phoenix area, the downtown area, the downtown Glendale area. I would really like to see that, especially since this is going to be the gateway to the city center area, that I think it might make a very distinctive mark. So thank you very much. Our pleasure. Other questions or comments for Mr. Bull? I too was blown away when I saw the the elevations. Um, I really like the idea of building smaller neighborhoods that have um, different architecture. I, I think from the elevations, um, these are the kinds of homes that people are going to be drawn to Goodyear because they're here. Um, and not being built in other places. Um, the challenge, as Mr. Gelser said, um, and I think you'll find it again when you hit the city council, the challenge will be 
we hope it looks like what you've presented here. Um, we've had a couple of instances in the not too distant past where what was proposed was very different than the pictures that were presented at the time of zoning. And uh, when, the, when it came to the site plan, fortunately we had a use permit to deal with and uh, we were able to uh, illuminate the issue to a point where the, uh, the developer decided that it was in his best interest to, uh, to conform. Um, I, we have not had um, an adversarial relationship. I anticipate that the, good word, the, the, the goodwill will continue and that you will build what you've proposed. And I'm excited about this project. I think this is really, really starting to break the mold and the kind of thing that I think many of us have been looking for. The red tile roofs and uh, the Santa Barbara architecture, I think we beat that to death. And it's time for something that looks a little different. The bungalows, the townhomes um, I, are, are welcome. And the way you've done the, uh, the court homes and the multifamily, I think, is really uh, creative. And I'm looking forward to seeing that product on the ground. And with that, I'll end my comments. Mr. Chairman, if I may add, um, I just drafted some language for the for a 35th stipulation addressing Commissioner Bay's uh, concern. Um, and it reads as follows. The public sales report and final plats shall include a statement disclosing that the streets within Australia Commons shall be maintained by the Homeowners Association. All right. And I'd be happy to accept that additional stipulation. Thank you. I'd be happy to waive rebuttal. This law, shouldn't that be also the developer until it's turned over to the Homeowners Association? Quibble, but. Well, the developer is the Homeowners Association until they turn, turn it over. Thank God. <laughs> I will include that in there somehow. We trust that uh, you know the spirit and whatever the language ends up being. Okay. Or I think we're, uh, we're comfortable with that. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this case? Last opportunity before I close the public hearing. Any further comments or questions? Okay. Close the public hearing and ask for commission action. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve case 06200-00003, um, the request to rezone approximately 180 acres um, from AU to preliminary planned area development for 30 acres of commercial and a final PAD area development for 150 acres of residential with 35 stipulations and um, 17, 19, 21, and 34 uh, have been revised by mutual agreement with staff and the developer. I have a motion. Second. second. Do I have a sec second for Mr. DeBroker? Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Bull. Thank you very much. Okay, our next case is 06-350-00005, Wireless Communication Facilities, Special Use Permit, a public hearing to consider a request for a special use permit for a wireless communication facility on 0 0.01 acres, generally located 130 feet south of McDowell Road and approximately 600 feet west of Saraville Avenue in the Pebble Creek Golf Resort planned area development. The applicant is Paula Day of Plan Com Incorporated. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Um, staff is recommending mm -hmm. that that uh, particular item be deferred to the October 4th meeting to rectify a uh, error in the, uh, the public notice, um, which indicated a wrong uh, address. So we have re-advertised that to indicate the correct address and okay, thus you, deferring it to the Do we need formal commission action to, uh, to do that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then in that Be case, before we vote, could you grab the map and show us where this tower is going to be located? Uh, I regret, unless anybody here has a map of, of Pebble Creek. Um, it's if you recall the maintenance uh, facility. There was a, actually a T-Mobile facility. It's up. It's south of Indian School and in Sarville. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, instead of McDowell Road, that's the error. Okay, so so it's yeah. in that maintenance <clears throat> facility area near the former monopalm or the current monopalm. Correct. It's within uh, seventy-five, eighty feet of that monopalm. Great. We'll have another one. Okay. In that case, I'll entertain a motion to continue. Continue this item, sir. On the, on the wireless communication facility special use permit. Okay, I have a motion. Second, second, for, again for Mr. DeBroker. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries to continue that case to October 4th. Case 05-630-00010 Palm Place Plaza. Say that fast. Comprehensive sign package, a request for the approval of the comprehensive sign package for Palm Place Plaza, a professional office development on 4.4 acres, generally located in the southeast corner of McDowell Road and 145th Avenue within the general commercial C2 district. The applicant is Randy Garcia of Young Electric Sign Company. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Subject four and a half acre property is located at the southeast corner of McDowell Road and 145th Avenue and is known as Palm Place Plaza, a professional office development that will consist of seven single story condominium buildings ranging in size from just over 5,000 square feet to approximately 8,100 square feet. The applicant this evening is requesting approval of a comprehensive sign package that addresses building mounted signage, window signage, private delivery and entrance door signage, as well as two freestanding monument signs. By looking at this exhibit, you'll be able to see the locations of the two proposed uh, freestanding tenant monument signs. One will be located adjacent to 145th Avenue at that access point. The other one will be located at McDowell Road at the uh, McDowell Road access point. This is an exhibit of the proposed multi-tenant signage. The signage will include the same type of slight embellishment that is proposed for uh, the office buildings. And each monument sign will identify the Palm Place Plaza name and contain eight, eight tenant uh, panels. Staff is recommending approval of the sign package with the notice stipulations as it is in compliance with the provisions of the zoning ordinance. This concludes my presentation. The applicant, uh, Randy Garcia, is here tonight. Staff and the applicant are available for any questions you may have. Mr. Canning, questions of staff? Chairman Wilson? Mr. Bay. Uh, the commission one time had some discussion on a similar package. Uh, and I think uh, in that discussion, we began talking about uh, hand painted signs and windows and things like that. For, and we want to try to uh, restrict or limit that. Uh, I didn't know if the commission still felt that way about this and thought I'd raise the, raise the concern. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Bay, um, that's already, um, there's already specific standards in our zoning ordinance. Is there? Um, Okay. Percentage. I'm trying to remember. I think it was. Yeah, I know it was a while ago. <laughs> I can't remember everything. Maybe it's, uh, we have the ordinance here, but I, th it's covered under. The if it's covered, I'm fine. I'm good. So that's one of the staff members. Right now. 
do cover signage, but one of the things that um, Brett has reminded me of, I don't, if you, if you recall in the Palm Valley um, Cornerstone mm -hmm. development at the corner of oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. Dysart and, and McDowell Road, High Health, um, they um, plastered their windows with purple. <laughs> Uh, purple something. I don't know what, um, for security reasons, I think. And that's not really covered in our ordinance. We didn't have anything to cover something like that. So if, if we want to preclude something like that from happening, then we'd have to add a separate stipulation. It's, it's, uh, it's up to you. I mean, you want to manage Mr. That. Chairman, members of the Commission, I'd like to point out that this sign package specifically prohibits translucent materials to be placed in windows, and that would cover the type of signage that Harvey would speak of. Finger painting, that sort of stuff. That does prohibit painting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. <laughs> yeah, and I believe the sign ordinance has been updated since that discussion. <laughs> We're all sufficiently foggy about <laughs> about the details, but I think the intent is uh, is clear. Okay. <clears throat> Any. Other questions of staff? I think, I think one of the only things that I ever see as an issue for me as being a retailer myself is that the the back doors, I keep seeing in a lot of these sign packages that the uh, letterings or numbers of back doors can only be an inch tall, and that's just not appropriate. And so looking at Exhibit D, it's hard to tell if that's the case here or not because it says scale three-eighths of an inch to one inch rear entrance well, elevation. I'm saying that it's a foot. Is that a foot? I'm sorry, not it's an inch. Okay, then I'm inches. fine. <laughs> 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 That's only ever my issue. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of staff? Questions for the applicant? Anyone that would like to speak to the sign package, sign plan? If not, Mr. Chairman, entertain commission action. Mr. Chairman, I move uh, that we recommend approval of the of case 05-630-00010, the Palm Place Plaza Comprehensive Sign Package. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second for my motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Okay. Case 06 500 0001, Palm Valley Commerce Park Phase 2 Preliminary Plat Amendment. A request to a, for approval to amend the preliminary plat for Palm Valley Commerce Park Phase 2, subdividing approximately 68 acres into 11 lots and one tract, generally located at the northwest corner of McDowell and Litchfield Roads within phase two of the Palm Valley planned area development. The application, the applicant is uh, Jay Ellingson of Suncor Development. Thank you, uh, Chairman Horseman, members of the commission, members of the public. Um, Palm Valley phase two commerce park is a mixed use commercial development generally located at the northwest corner of Litchfield and McDowell Roads. The aerial photo exhibit that I've placed up here shows the subdivision boundary with a dotted yellow line. And you can see the land uses surrounding the subject property include to the north portions of the Hale Irwin Golf Course, uh, to the south the Palm Valley Pavilion's West Commercial Center, um, also to the south the McLean Southwest Building. To the west is the Palm Valley Phase 2, Parcel 1516, which is the Camelot Home subdivision that is currently being constructed. And to the east is the Palm Valley Luxury Rentals. And um, the, the prelim this preliminary plat application is being submitted as an amendment to 
to the um, previous subdivision plat. The original preliminary and final plats were, impro were approved in 2001 and 2002. And, and just in an effort to provide a little bit of, of background, um, as the commission may recall, development of this commercial center commenced with the construction of the, of the golf course. It was followed by the first phase of the Palm Valley Office Park development, which is the office building at the, at the corner of Litchfield and McDowell. Subsequent development occurred with the construction of the Hampton Inn, and now we have the Residence Inn Hotel. Um, we have the Washington Federal Savings Bank, Macaroni Grill, and McGrath's Fish House restaurants, and also the Lipsco Water Reclamation Facility. And also we have the La Piazza at Palm Valley Commercial Center that's also been constructed just, just to the uh, east of the Lipsco area. This exhibit uh, shows the, the boundaries of the plat and the properties that are involved. You can see the, the building footprints of the existing buildings on this exhibit. Since the original plat recording, various boundary revisions have occurred, and I want to run through those r real quick. Number one, the conversion of golf course tracks to residential and vice versa for the purpose of reducing golf balls encroaching into residential areas and also for reduction of golf course maintenance. Um, another change was the conversion of the golf course tracks to commercial use. There was the elimination of the pitch and putt executive golf course for economic reasons. The revision of the driving range and its irrigation lake as part of the plat and it's separated by a new subdivision. There was a revision in the shape of Lipsco's parcel to accommodate its ultimate building configuration, older easement requirements, and access and parking easements. And finally, internal to the original plat, there were various lot lines that have been slightly modified to accommodate purchase requirements of, of future users, uh, essentially to provide proper, light, proper lotting for future buyers in this area. Staff is recommending approval subject to the 15 stipulations outlined in the staff report. And this concludes the presentation by staff. Staff is available to, to answer any questions. Mr. J. Ellingson with Suncor is also available for any questions that you might have. Questions for staff? I have one, uh, one question that, that J. may want to answer. <clears throat> the circulation into the two, the three new lots on the uh, east side of the driving range. There's a, uh, a roadway that goes between, is it Macaroni Grill and the bank? Is that correct? I think it's the hotel. Or the hotel. Um, the how will the access be handled to the uh, parcel that's furthest to the to the south? Will there be access built on those three new lots to uh, provide interparcel access? Uh, Chairman, members of the commission, Jay Ellingson, 14130 West McDowell Road. It's good to be here again. Uh, the, the road actually does exist already. If, if you can, can't see it very well, this connection is already made uh, from the Palm Valley Office Park up to this road already. Is that what you were asking? It is indeed. Okay. And I... The, this road will be extended here as well, providing access to this lot and this lot. Uh, there, is a, there is currently a buyer for this that has at least shown some preliminary renderings for an office building uh, on this lot. I will say that, that this 
um, process has been um, a long one because every time we have submitted it, there came another change. And so the process, much to our fault, has been delayed because if it was odor easements or if it was a change for the pitch and putt or it was a change for something else, it's we should have been able to do this um, some years ago. And so it just kind of fell through and we realized that we needed to amend this plat to show what the real circumstances of these, of these properties really is in terms of their relationship one to another. Thank you. Other questions of either Mr. Ellingson or staff? No question, but I have to give kudos to you, Suncor, because over the years I have truly seen where your company has had the insight of what something's not working, change it and make it better. You know, the outlets, shopping, and now uh, the pigeon hut, you know, as little as that may have been, but just seeing the, the insight of that. It's, it's not working, let's make it better, and, and they've always come ahead, so I thought that was, wanted to give you that. <laughs> Thank you. I wish our crystal ball was such that we didn't have to redo it, course. but you're right. We will, and we do. So now, just don't get rid of that one little lake that keeps those big white birds coming back, because I <laughs> really enjoy watching them. <laughs> Hopefully they won't go away. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Other questions of staff for Mr. Ellings? I, I have an off-topic question of Mr. Ellingson. Um, McDowell Road construction between Bullard and Litchfield Road. Can you give us any kind of estimate of completion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners, yes. And, and I would like to report that we're doing this work for the city of Goodyear. <laughs> we understand that. Well, this is truly it. it we don't have a dog in most of this road work. We're doing this as a favor to the city. But to answer your question specifically, um, they should be milling tomorrow in terms of the uh, laneage that's been added to the center lanes. And we should be paving uh, next week. Uh, that's The whole road gets an overlay of uh, rubberized asphalt. We're trying to hit the or work within the deadline of the end of next week because there's a price increase for all of that. So, cool. so it's coming to a conclusion. It's been difficult. There's been a lot of players and there's been a lot of considerations. Um, I hope in the future that we can talk everybody into doing the center lanes with the project because it's just more efficient and better use of money. So. Thank you. Thank you. We always want to stay informed. Mm -hmm. We appreciate whatever I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions or comments? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this case? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I just have to say for the record that the four, first four stipulations, most of this is existing. So it's there and we're not looking that we're going to be held to another standard and replace anything and so just for the record I have to say that so. thank you thank you anyone in the audience would like to speak hearing none close public hearing and ask for commission action chair I recommend that we uh, Approved case 06500000001, Palm Valley Thomas Park Phase 2, preliminary plat amendment with the 15 stipulations. I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a second from Mr. Lux. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Ellingson. Next case is case 06-630-00003, Palm Valley Medical Campus Comprehensive Sign Package, a request for the approval of a comprehensive sign package for Palm Valley Medical Campus to allow for directional, monument, and wall signage located at 13677 West McDowell Road within the Palm Valley Planned Area Development 
The applicant is Alan Swaim of Abrazo Health. Mr. Birmingham. Thank you. Chairman Hortzman, members of the commission, members of the public, I put up an aerial photo showing the Palm Valley Medical Campus. Um, you can see the boundaries again are, um, there's a yellow line around the boundaries of the campus. Uh, the hospital is right here. You have the, the Target building here, Palm Valley Pavilions, Commercial Center to the west. To the south are the large retention basins. They're, they're actually uh, under the jurisdiction of Maricopa County Flood Control District. To the east, the Palm Valley Cornerstone Commercial Center where the, the lowest building is, and to the north, single family residential. Um, I'm going to put up a, a different exhibit here so you can see the different buildings that are included. Okay, so this is exhibit shows McDowell Road to the north. Um, the target building would be this area. So the, the, the hospital is here. Here's the existing Palm Valley Rehabilitation Center. And then uh, this area here is, is the 18 acres that uh, the hospital has recently purchased from Suncorp. Um, as was mentioned, this, this case is a comprehensive sign package to allow for directional monument wall signage and building addressing signage for the Palm Valley Medical Center. And to provide uh, some brief background, as the Commission is, is aware, the Palm Valley Medical Center has expa it's expanded uh, dramatically since its original master plan approval in 1997. Um, as I mentioned, most recently Vanguard acquired 18 acres from <coughs> Suncor in 2004 to expand their medical campus. And the hospital building also has recently expanded. Uh, it's added two additional floors to five stories, and there is a ground floor addition that, that is currently in, in the works to expand the clinical space of the, of the first floor of the hospital. The, the exhibit that you have before you right now shows the, the freestanding signs that are included in the sign package. The, uh, one of the things that we had to take into consideration when we were reviewing this sign package, the zoning ordinance did not contemplate signage for a, a hospital center or a medical campus type environment. Um, so we had to take that into consideration when, when we were reviewing the, the number of signs that they're requesting and also the size of the signage that's in your packet. There are five requests that, in most instances, slightly exceed the zoning ordinance standards, and, and those are all outlined in your staff report. Um, however, given the importance of the hospital and the Palm Valley Medical Center in the community and the reasonable request that they're, uh, of the applicant, staff, rec staff recommends approval of the sign package subject to the four stipulations outlined in your staff report. I want to focus in on one of the signs to give you an example of one of the requests. The applicant is requesting a hospital <coughs> monument sign with a proposed height of 12 feet 10 inches and um, the zoning ordinance standard is 8 feet. And in addition, um, the, the, the area of the sign of some of the signs are slightly larger than, than what the zoning ordinance would allow. For example, uh, the zoning ordinance sets a limit of 48 square feet of sign area. So this sign does slightly exceed the zoning ordinance standards. Uh, the, the applicant has provided uh, detailed rationale for each of the requests that are in deviation of the zoning ordinance. And um, staff has evaluated the, the requests and recommends approval. We have uh, representatives from both the hospital and representatives of uh, the sign company who, who put the sign package together. 
Um, this concludes the presentation by staff. Staff is available to answer any questions, and, and uh, there are several individuals on behalf of the applicant who are available for questions as well. Just a, a quick comment. This is exactly what we were looking for when the previous uh, proposal was submitted, and I'm really pleased to see a comprehensive package brought forward. Yes, the, uh, <clears throat> there is situations where it exceeds the, uh, the ordinance, but I think the public health and safety are more than adequate reasons for conforming, providing the community with appropriate direction to particularly emergency and, and, and hospital facilities. So I think that uh, the, the staff has hit it on the head and turned, hit the nail on the head in, in that regard. Are there other questions of uh, staff? Just, just one, Mr. Bay. Chair Horseman, uh, I noticed that they included in their package that there's a future signal uh, at the hospital entrance. Uh, is that being put in by the city, or is the hospital putting that signal in? Hang on just a second. Chairman Horseman, Commissioner Bay, in conjunction with the, the zoning and the expansion of the hospital, the developer of the hospital is required to install the, a traffic signal at the intersection of McDowell Road and 136th Drive. And the stipulation on the zoning was that the traffic signal needed to be constructed and operational prior to the certificate of occupancy for the ground floor expansion. I have a question for you, or maybe for, for the applicant. Um, the connection between Cornerstone Boulevard and the medical campus, um, basically the bridge over the wash that's there, um, when, when do we anticipate that being built? I'll defer that question to the applicant. <laughs> We didn't schedule that. So. Uh, Mark Barkenbush, 8620 North 22nd Avenue, representing Vanguard Health Systems. Uh, Mr. Kish, Mr. Chairman and, and Commissioner Gelzer, the current project that we have uh, in construction now includes a connection between that parking lot and Cornerstone Avenue, and we anticipate that that will be constructed and complete prior to the occupancy or certificate of occupancy for the first floor expansion as well. I, I, now that you're up here, I have a couple of other questions. <laughs> um, when do you anticipate um, parking structures being built? You know, can you give me any kind of time frame on that? The We don't have a specific time frame yet. Part of it is contingent upon how rapidly the other medical office building development occurs. We currently have some discussions with a developer who is interested in beginning uh, the next office building, which on your... That would be building one? Uh, building number two okay. is anticipated as being the next. Is, it, is the developer the um, IMS people? That's who has expressed interest in that project. Okay. Um, Last question, then I have a comment. Um, your, how are you going to handle the current signage, especially the Palm Valley Medical Plaza building, the existing building that's there, the original building? Um, that sign looks kind of dated and old. Are we going to uh, retrofit the building, or does a midnight, um, you know, destruction or have to go out and wipe it out for you yeah. so you have to replace it we've we've had discussions with uh, all of the uh, members of the association and uh, their recommendation um, is that when they would have to make upgrades to their sign either for maintenance purposes or changing out a significant portion of the um, tenants in the building that at, at that point they would then bring the sign into conformance with the comprehensive sign package. They have objected to 
if this is passed, then having to you know, do that in one fell swoop. And so that, that's can, been their I can, request. I, I can, you know, rest assured the city council will encourage them to do it sooner rather than later just for the look of the campus. Um, my, my comment to you is I, I'm going to give you, you know, the good news and the bad news. The good news is this is a great sign package. The bad news is it took t way too long for you to bring it forward. Um, this should have been, when we, sent, when we sent the hospital packing almost a year and a half ago and told them to come up with a comprehensive sign package, and here we are a year and a half later, and you're finally getting it to us, um, I, I just think it's, it, you waited too long. Um, I, and like I said, I, I, you know, in some ways, I mean, you know, the fact that you've delayed it and you've put together an excellent package is very, very good. Um, however, I sure wish we would have seen it six, eight, nine months ago because, you know, the, this campus is, is really moving right along. So, appreciate it. Thank you. Me. Other questions or comments, Mr. Bay? Sure, not that, it's not, uh, uh, I'm glad to see the sign package. I know that we're being asked to do over the limit, over the top. Uh, but there's a couple of things in the package that uh, I'm not comfortable with. So I just want to point them out. First of all, uh, it does not take into consideration all of the traffic that's actually going to be coming from what's currently called Santa Fe, Rancho Santa Fe Boulevard, and turns into, I guess it's called Crossroads, Cornerstone Boulevard. That's a, that's a, a long, open thoroughfare that leads directly to your campus, and I don't see anywhere here where you're providing uh, direction for these people who are have an emergency to get in that will allow them to come sh directly down that road and then find their way into the facility and over to the hospital. And so more specifically, what I did, I marked, I marked mine up if that would help, um, to show that, uh, that from, from my perspective for traffic circulation, coming down that long road, then what they run into here is uh, this, this corner of your campus. And my assumption is that this, these roads continue through and there's no signage here that allows them to move forward. Um, at, at this point in time, that, those roadways don't uh, exist. Agreed. Um, Neither do any of these buildings or parking lots, so. Okay. <laughs> Our, our initial thinking, uh, just to respond to that, our initial thinking was that um, we know that that roadway would be a reliever, but from a wayfinding experience, f as far as addressing and, and getting visitors to the campus for the for the, for the first time, uh, the majority of the access into the campus would be off of McDowell Road. And that was our, our thought process in, in, in bringing people into the campus from uh, McDowell. I, I, I want to echo Commissioner Bay's concerns. Um, you know, I, I drive Cornerstone Boulevard a lot to get over to Mimi's and slip right behind, and you come right out of Walmart and go right across the street, and it's a straight shot down there. And um, I, I sure wish you would add a... <laughs> Think about adding another directional sign that faces, you know, face for people coming from the west, because people are going to slip in through those back streets when they because they know about them, okay. and 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 I think that um, I think the commission and city council would support it, and um, we just think we would rather err on the. I know a sign costs money, but I think this is something that that would be beneficial to the circulation. Especially since you, most of your verbiage in here talks about public safety, life, healthy, and finding their way through the campus. That you have a you have a back way, or which seems more more of a thoroughfare. I mean, for example, if there were an event on the freeway or the underpass, uh, an ambulance would take that Cornerstone Boulevard. They wouldn't go all the way up to McDowell and then come all the way over and then come all the way back down. So. Uh, I would I, I would highly recommend that you include additional signs uh, to to service those people who come from that direction. Okay, um, 
my team has recommended <laughs> just pointing out a, a couple clarifications just so I, I understand the expectation. Um, signs labeled C, um, C2.3 .3, and then also further interior, um, I believe sign um, 3.4 as well as potentially C2.2 may address some of that directional wayfinding. You may want to consider L-shaped signs <laughs> that are, you know, both directions. That, that, that work in may? both both directions. Well, I, I guess just a general comment. I, I appreciate the, the feedback and understand okay. the the concern. And as far as representing uh, our proposal, we would not be opposed to um, okay. modifying this to to suit those needs because again it is the intent is to, to make the experience uh, as easy to navigate the campus as possible. Okay. Well, that's good enough for me. Um, do we need to indicate, have some sort of indication of assigned placement for your site plan bef if we were to approve this before we go to council or do we need to see right. this? Do you, do you think you can work it out with the applicant before it goes to council without us making a motion to try to add Stipulations to certain specific signs locations. Mm -hmm. Chairman Horseman Christian yells are yes. Thank you. Okay, that's good enough for me. Oh, there was, I had one other comment. All of these signs look really, really nice, except for C3 and C4. And, and I, I, I hate to say this, but I hate to be the one to say this because it should come from someone else, I'm sure. But you've put a lot of uh, effort into these other signs, and, and these signs are, in some cases, at least similar width, maybe not similar height. Uh, I would like for you to keep that theme of having the CMU block as a base foundation for all of your signs. Since we're being so benevolent in allowing you to have these larger signs, <laughs> the minimum that you could do is make eliminate these C3 and C4s and use nothing less than a C2 sign on your campus. Chairman Horseman, Commissioner Bay, yes. um, for the record, staff did recommend that, that these two signs contain a block base similar to the other design. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I will defer to the applicant to provide the uh, rationale for why they, why they did not want to move in that direction. Okay. <coughs> You want to. Okay. <laughs> Chairman, Commissioners, Jamie Calgill, JRC Design at 4634 North 44th Street, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, the, the development of the science system is based on a hierarchy of information and need, basically. It also, these signs already match the existing signs that have been approved on the site, and there are quite a few of them throughout the site. That are, that are currently in effect directing people to individual locations to pull into parking, park over here, residents or visitors over here, doctors over here. So it was also a condition of expense. When you add a brick base, you might as well add another $1,000 for each base that you put on. A hospital works on a very low profit margin, as you know. I know we all think that they, they make a lot of money, but they don't. Um, and so we have budget issues. We also have the hierarchy of elements that, again, the, the more important the sign, the more massive and the larger, the taller they are. Therefore, that's why they were reduced to a much smaller size. They're not as, there's not as much information needed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, I'm <laughs> Well, all these others, I'll, I'll trade, I'll, I'll okay. trade you the C3s and C4s for the good signs that come, a couple of signs that come from the west that give us some direction from the areas that we thought we had concerns with. I mean, I'll defer to. But you'd know, like the larger ones at, on the on the east edge. Yeah, on the I, east I want edge. to be able. I, I want people who sneak behind pennies yeah. to be able to find the hospital and find the right building that they need to go to. We dealt with that issue with um, Suncor, and you know, theoretically, you don't want to take people 
in, in stress when they're driving, in a stress-related issue, if someone is injured through a retail environment because they're driving fast, they're going to run over people, you're not expecting but trust pedestrians. Me, but trust me, no, I, going, I understand. going behind Lowe's and going behind the sports place and going behind Penny's is a real easy shot. Already and yes, you yes. do it. Already, you already go through there? Already go there all the time. Right. That's the fast way. Again, it's going over private property and it's not ours. We can address it for sure. I'm just for saying, I mean, your campus is where you need to, you know, No, that's what I'm saying. We can. We will address those, those out, out, eastern edges on that. Okay, well, I guess I'll go with Commissioner Gelson. I'll let you keep your stick signs. <laughs> stick signs. Thank but, you. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, here in, in your plan, though, it says that you're replacing most of these signs. And uh, are, are these are these actually new signs that you're putting in, these C4s? Are these new or are these replacements? Some are going to be replacements. There may be just face changes on existing signs. We tried to work with many of the elements that they had so that we could save money for the hospital. Okay. Because well, I know it's costing them more money for the larger signs. So, all right. I'm good with that. Thank, Thank you. you. Other questions or comments? Is there anyone else that would like to address the Commission on the sign package. Last call for questions or comments. Okay. Not, I will entertain Commission action. Mr. Chairman, I recommend uh, approval of case 06 630 0 the Palm Valley Medical Campus <clears throat> Comprehensive Sign Package. I have a motion recommending approval. Do I have a second? Uh, uh, I'd like to uh, amend his, his motion uh, to assure that they work with staff to include additional signs. And if you would uh, agree to that, then I will second the motion. Is that agreeable? Sure. Okay. Okay. I'll second the motion. motion. Okay. We have. The amended motion and the second by Mr. Bay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Sure. Yeah. We're going to take a five minute uh, break.
We're back on the record. Our next case is case 05-200-00017, Wood Corporate Center Rezone. This is public hearing to consider a request to rezone approximately 244 acres, generally located along the east side of Estrella Parkway between Goodyear Boulevard on the north, Elwood Road on the south, from the Agricultural AG District to Final Planned Area Development, PAD District, for mixed-use development containing commercial, industrial, business, office park, and residential land uses. The applicant is John Ruggieri of Rose Property Southwest. Open the public hearing. Mr. Bob. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, thank you. Uh, as you said, this is an application for PAD zoning on approximately 244 acres uh, along the Estrella Parkway. Uh, it comprises two parcels. Uh, the northern parcel is uh, approximately uh, 57 acres. It's located north of Goodyear Boulevard, uh, excuse me, Lower Buckeye Road, and extends uh, a little bit north of Goodyear Boulevard. The southern parcel is 187 acres and extends on the south from Elwood Road to about 400 feet short of Lower Buckeye Road. Uh, the surrounding property is uh, to the north is undeveloped agricultural lands owned by uh, Sun NP. Uh, they have an application pending with the city staff for uh, similar planned area development zoning for mixed use development. To the south is the, is the uh, Insumet uh, aluminum recycling facility. To the east is Bullard Wash and uh, the Goodyear, Phoenix Goodyear Airport. On the west side of Australia Parkway at this location, uh, on the southern portion is agricultural lands that was a subject of a rezoning that you heard your last hearing uh, for mixed use development, some industrial, some residential further to the west. And along the west side of Australia Parkway is the Australia Vista residential community. The uh, city's general plan designates the southern 187 acres for light industrial and general industrial uses. The northern 57 acres is uh, the, the majority portion of it from Lower Buckeye Road to Goodyear Boulevard South in this area is designated as community commercial and the part north of uh, Goodyear Boulevard South is within the city center designation. The, the city center Pacific plan area plan which uh, this commission recommended for approval in August and goes before the city council next week designates the southeast quadrant of the city center area as business park land uses. To orient you relative to the city center Pacific area plan, the portion of this property is within the southern uh, area of the city center plan. It's not within the Main Street Main Ring Road, but is in the lower portion. And is again designated in the city center plan as business park land uses. Again, this is an application for a planned area development for a mixed use. The applicant has submitted a detailed uh, development plan called Wood Corporate Campus. I want a, a booklet to provide it to you. Uh, it contains the development master plan, conceptual illustrated plans for each sub-development area, a matrix of permitted land uses for each of those areas, uh, circulation plan, and development standards for each of the development areas. In addition to providing the uh, planned area development booklet, there's also included and is supplemental to the PAD rezoning is a set of development design guidelines that contain architectural guidelines, building development standards, landscape guidelines that all guide the future development of the property. In regards to the detailed development plan for this mixed use development, in the northern ac uh, 57 acres, uh, from Lower Buckeye Road to, to Goodyear Boulevard and just north of Goodyear Boulevard. This is planned for a mixed-use development. Mixed-use as defined and structured within the PAD 
is for commercial retail, restaurants, entertainment, offices, and enhanced employment opportunities. It also contains a limited number of multifamily residential units, uh, 112, uh, as being above ground floor retail. These land uses are consistent with the city center uh, concepts for that quadrant, southeast quadrant, uh, which also encourages employment uses and a similar design concepts regards to an urban character. The southern uh, larger portion of their development plan uh, is proposed for three different types of land uses. Business office park, which is what's shown in the varied shades of purple. And I'll describe a little bit those in a few minutes. The lower south end is a community commercial parcel that's in kind of a pink color. And then there's a small light industrial area on the uh, southeast side of Lower Baca or Bullard Avenue that's separated from the rest of the development. The business park area is subdivided or divided into three subcategories. Uh, they are flex industrial low office. These are one and two-story buildings. Mid office, which are three to six-story office buildings, and what they call high office, which is seven or, or to nine stories. Uh, Within their development plan, the very light purple is what is the flow lex flow flex low office. The around this area is the mid office, and the high office is within this core. The land uses within this business park area are the plan for light manufacturing, electronic pr product and component manufacturing, computer and high technology uses. Uh, general office buildings, research and development, uh, aerospace, aeronautics, those types of land uses you would see within a, within a business uh, campus environment, business park campus environment. The commercial area in the, in the lower south area contains 23 acres. This is planned for a typical neighborhood shopping center. Uh, the uses would be, you know, grocery stores, restaurants, and drug stores. The small industrial area is really only about three and a half acres in the far southeast corner. Uh, again, this is isolated from the other part of the development with Board Avenue. Uh, it's planned for very limited light industrial uses and uses that are compatible with airport operations. The light industrial area is within the approach path for uh, Phoenix Goodyear Airport. The buildings within that development area are limited to, to uh, one story, 20 feet. The development plan, PAD development plan, contains specific development uh, standards for each development area. And we're hard to see, but uh, in Table 4.1 within the, within the PAD, contains a table that defines the building height, setbacks, um, maximum lot coverage, and other development standards for each of the sub areas. Uh, the mixed use area, mixed, uh, as well as the business park and the three categories of business park, the commercial and the light industrial. The building heights proposed within uh, this PAD are higher than that which are typically found within the commercial and industrial districts. Uh, also, the, the building setbacks are closer to the street than you would normally find. These are consistent with their concept of what's being proposed is for an urban character uh, and, a, and a corporate business campus bringing the buildings closer to the street and creating more pedestrian orientation. Similar concepts as what's in the city center plan. In staff's analysis, the, uh, the request of PAD zoning is consistent with the light industrial, general industrial, and community commercial land uses designated in the general plan. The development of the property as a planned mixed use business park project is compatible with the adjoining properties in the immediate area, uh, which are also planned or zoned today for a similar business park or commercial development. The proposal will be compatible with the residential land uses on the west, west side of the Estrella Parkway, this location. The PAD specifies that the maximum building height of all buildings along Estrella 
be no higher than 30 feet as a transition from the higher intense buildings within this project to the single family residential to the, to the west. The zoning and proposed mixed use development uh, of the northern parcel, as I said earlier, uh, is consistent with the city center Pacific area plan, which designates the southeast quadrant as business park land, park land uses. Staff has two items of, of somewhat concern in regards to the PAD that we've included in the staff report. Uh, the first one is the proposal for the maximum building heights. The PAD specifies that the maximum building height within the business park area is 63 feet, uh, five stories, which staff is comfortable with. In the mid office and high office areas, greater building heights may be achieved. Uh, to a maximum of 83 feet in the middle mm -hmm. office and 122 feet in the high office by the approval of a use permit. Uh, staff, well, staff is comfortable with those types of buildings uh, in order to create the character and urban character and the type of development that's proposed here. Those heights may or may not be appropriate immediately. Uh, they may be more appropriate in the long in the future. Uh, and under certain con conditions. So therefore, we recommended that they be done by use permit, anything heights over 63 feet. Staff wants to ensure that the applicant understands that, th that this is not an entitlement to this use permit and, and therefore has recommended a stipulation that provides some standards within the PAD under what conditions we would feel a use permit would be appropriate. So we've included language and stipulation number two that talks about the appropriateness of the use permit relative to our primary concern. One, the appropriate development of the city center area and the heights and building heights that are proposed there. Also, there's a technical concern about the current city's capability of fire response to the taller buildings, water pressure, some other technical issues that haven't been really solved today. So. We're, we're proposing within stipulation number two, basically providing some guidance that in future use permit requests for any building heights over 63 feet, that these are the items that we want the city staff, planning commission, the city council to consider. The second item is uh, within re recent months, as you know, in response to city uh, initiatives to encourage the establishment of a spring training baseball facility that this site has been identified as being potential for that type of facility. And that's growing and changing every day, getting closer to every day. The current Wood Campus PAD, however, doesn't specifically list spring training baseball facility as a permitted use within the business park area. Uh, so we have recommended that the PAD be revised prior to going to city council to specifically list that use as a permitted use within the business park zone. Also, we recommended that as part of that stipulation that requirements may be placed within the development plan that any potential baseball facility be reviewed and approved by the City Planning Commission and City Council. But more importantly, that should that occur, that facility occur on this property, that the applicant be required to submit an amended PAD for those portions of the, of the property that are not a part of the baseball facility. That baseball facility would not likely encompass all of the PAD. So, and, and obviously that use would drastically change what occurs on the remaining portion of the property. So we're basically saying an amended PAD would be warranted at that time to show how the property would be developed. That concludes this set my presentation in regards to the applications against staff's recommending approval subject to the uh, 22 stipulations in the report. Before I conclude, I want to address a couple of items. Uh, planning staff has received and reported to the commission uh, some comments from uh, Sun MP, the adjacent property owner, regards to the PAD proposal. They are not objecting to the proposal. They're not in opposition. They generally support that, although they have raised a couple of points that I wanted to respond to just for the commission's purposes. In uh, Todd Tuffer's from Sun MP's comments, 
he indicates a question about whether or not parking structures would be governed by the same height limitations as other buildings, and the answer to that is yes. So parking structures are restricted in the same manner as any other buildings in the dimension requirements. He raises a question about, throughout here, uh, some questions about flexibility within this case. PAD may not be too much flexibility uh, as compared to what has been transpired in other PADs. Uh, you know, our response is, is the PAD contains specific development standards for each of the sub areas. It contains land, permitted land use matrix defining what uses are allowed in each of the sub areas. So from staff standpoint, we believe that the, uh, while there is flexibility within the mixed use development, there are development standards that guide the development of each of the sub areas that are adequate for staff, for staff purposes to achieve what the PAD says it is. Um, he raises the question in, in one regards that concern about the total square footage that's identified within the PAD of 4.4 million, which is a lot of square footage of office space and development, that that would be increased based upon if they got building heights higher than the 63 feet. I want to make it clear that the 4.4 million that's identified in the development plan is that which was if you did the highest buildings. So it would not exceed that amount of square footage. So that's already taken into consideration then. And I guess finally, I think finally, one item to want to cover, he makes a, a reference and concern in regards to the city center area in its specific area plan, uh, while it, embr it embraces the development of mixed use throughout the city center area, and questions whether or not this development really is mixed use in that concept. The city center plan is mixed use because in each of the quadrants you have different land use provided. You know, whether or not it's, it's, it's offices, residential, civic, or business park. In the same manner in this PAD, there are sub areas that define general commercial, business park, and mixed use. From that standpoint, this is a mixed use development. And then it finally raises a question of concern about the inclusion of baseball and what happens with the rest of the property that's not developed by baseball. And would the applicant then ask for all the intensity that is in this plan? to be moved into the whatever area is left. And again, I've responded that one of our stipulations that we've recommended is that if that occurs and baseball does occur on this property, that the applicant be required to do an amended PAD for that remaining portion of the property. And I think the applicant's representative will address the baseball issue, which I'm not involved in directly <laughs> at all. So with that, I'll conclude my comments. I'll be glad to answer any questions. And again, the applicant's representative is here and sure can answer your questions also. Questions of staff? Mr. Gales. Sure. Uh, Bob, um, doesn't stipulation 21 and 22 cover the concerns that you raised um, concerning the appropriate business height, the water pressure, the baseball, all of that? You know, when I kind of read 21 and 22, I kind of said, well, that seems to cover all the concerns that, that are sitting around. Is it, Am I reading this correctly, or are you looking for additional stipulations? Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Gelser, I'm sorry I make that clear. No, those two stipulations cover our concerns. Okay. And that's and why they're there. And then the second question I have is, um, on page 17 of the um, – PAD plan where they talk about the 4.4 million square feet. Um, you said that include if if the high office and the mid office go to 122 feet and 83 feet, then they would be able to develop 4.4 million, or is there an additional? million square feet of, of office space that could happen. That, that's where I'm a little confused. Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Gelser, no, it would be the 4.4 million, and that includes the 
possibility to go to the 83 and 122 feet. So it would not be in addition to that 4.4. Okay. So, so if they don't get that use permit, then they would be developing less um, off square office square feet, right? Because sure. there would be less okay. stories. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or comments, Mr. Bay? Thank you, Chairman Ruffin. Uh, just, just one comment on the uh, 2.1 site conditions map on page 5. Uh, it's indicated that there is a potential general aviation runway to the west of the existing runway at Phoenix Goodyear Airport. Uh, I, I don't know where the airport is with the master plan, uh, but that does raise some concerns for me that we now have an air uh, an airstrip uh, moved more in alignment with what is uh, currently the 75 DNL and may, in fact, expand the existing noise contours out and change uh, the, the use, usage required within the property that, uh, that currently exists today. So I guess my question, and I'm trying, trying to paint this picture to see if I can say this right, are the development activities that are occurring on the wood property in, taking in consideration the master plan and activities that's occurring uh, at the Phoenix Goodyear Airport? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Bay, you know, I'm going to defer a little bit of that to the applicant okay. and possibly to, to Harvey. It's my understanding is, is the answer to that is it, it, the PAD has incorporated and considered that expansion, and I believe what's shown on the development plan is one of those options that are currently under consideration for the expansion of the airport. But I'm not – beyond that, I'm going to be okay. guessing. <laughs> okay. Because that, because ultimately that, you know, if you have to get an FAA <clears throat> approval to build building heights of a certain height, then uh, all of that would be contingent upon the condition at the time that those permits are requested. So I'm just can throwing I, that out there. Can I make it? I I sit on the on the Phoenix Goodyear Master Plan Update Committee, whatever you want to call this thing. <laughs> And um, yes, the the runway to the west of of the current runway is a potential 4,500 foot general aviation small plane runway. Um, however, that is option one of three options that are being proposed, and from my understanding, that is the least desirable option that at least the city of Goodyear is is. Um, talking to Phoenix on. Um, Are the other two options also to the east of the runway? Uh, the other two, the other two, the, the, the other two, the second option is um, looking f to buy land to the northeast of the of the Phoenix Goodyear Airport, and yes, that runway would be there, uh -huh. but there would be commercial um, plats, aviation aviation, commercial, industrial lots being sold, and the third alternative has a runway to the southeast, um, and it would, it, would, it would not interfere at all. But neither, either plan does, would not interfere with what the woods are proposing from a height point of view. Just throwing it out there because but no matter what happens, it, at some, some point should those runways become active the existing noise contours would expand out. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, um, yeah. Commissioner Bay, uh, clarify the one on the, um, the runway. Um, uh, the FAA, we're looking at a maximum height of 150 feet um, for a building height, so I think we're well under that in terms of um, impact from the uh, operations, no matter where the or the, place the, the new uh, the new runways. Okay. Uh, then you have the issue of the noise, and um, uh, it has to do with more of the operate the type of operation mm -hmm. more so than the um, the runway. Of course, residential is not recommended, um, so you don't have residential or other noise sensitive um, land uses. 
and, and in other studies I've seen with uh, noise contours, depending on whether, how you change the operations, usually the noise would tend to, um, if you change it, usually it's not at the at the, where the runway is, it's more towards the end of the runway and it'll kind of spread out mm -hmm. and, and elongate. Probably more of the impact would be to the south mm -hmm. rather than to, um, to the middle of the property. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't anticipate the noise contours encroaching. And, even, and as I indicated, even if it did, you wouldn't be dealing with noise sensitive land uses. Okay. Um, All right. So that, that, that was my concern. So. Thank you. Thank you all. Other <laughs> questions or comments? Uh, I, I have a comment, question, Bob. Um, Bullard Avenue at the south parcel <laughs> um, dead ends into dirt. You know, Sun MP's dirt. Um, what are we going to do about that to develop this? Because that has a major impact on connectivity. Um, you know, I'll let the applicant answer it, but I'm sure that you've brought it up with the applicant um, concerning this. Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Gelser, I guess I will defer to the applicant in regards to that. I, maybe I can ask you for clarification. You say dead end to the south? No, dead ends to the north. To the north. To the north, and it ends in dirt. I, I will defer to the applicant. Uh, the, the alignment and improvement of Bullard Avenue through this property and then the relationship of that through the Sun MP property, which is directly to the north, and the connection to Lower Buckeye Road has been a subject for the applicant and Sun MP and the city for, for quite some time. So I'll let him talk to you about, about those discussions. Can't wait to hear the resolution of it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a couple of issues, and I think one of them uh, is uh, related to uh, Mr. Gelser's comment regarding um, Bullard Avenue. Um, I kind of broaden that issue um, to say that that's absolutely critical uh, to be through from Straya Parkway to Yuma. Um, Otherwise, the nightmare that somebody mentioned on TV last night that lives in Estrella Mountain Ranch um, about traffic on Estrella Parkway, if uh, Bullard Avenue isn't completed and we have a ballpark and practice fields and this um, potentially 4.4 million square foot of office at full development, that uh, if Bullard Avenue is not constructed at a fairly early stage all the way through from Australia to, uh, to Yuma, um, there's going to be some very significant issues. Um, related to that is the access from the northern parcel to the southern parcel through um, a parcel of land which is not owned by the developers the, or the Wood family. and uh, Therefore, uh, access between the parcels uh, are really being held hostage by uh, Sun MP and could be um, a real serious issue if everybody had to exit the north parcel, go out on Estrella Parkway to come back into um, the, uh, the southern parcel. Uh, Compatible development, uh, or at least consistent development, by Sun MP of that intervening parcel, and lastly, um, probably seven eight years ago, um, I suggested to the uh, city manager that he get together with Jack Loss, who's the general manager of the Insumet. Uh, uh, activity there on the corner about relocation because people in Australia Mountain Ranch were commenting about how attractive it was and I suspect that uh, the Wood family uh, probably has similar concerns as they uh, proceed with development. Um, Mr. Loss indicated that he'd like to work something out for relocation uh, and it's amazing how we're talking about 
annexing or or at least extending the planning boundaries down to Mobile, mm -hmm. and that was kind of where Mr. Loss was talking about getting some cheap land down there and starting to load the uh, aluminum fines down there and watch the pile go down and then move the equipment. Uh, is there any information whatsoever from any discussions between the city and Insumet about the status of that project and the potential to move them uh, with or without city participation? Because uh, I know in the general plan we put a uh, a uh, transit station on the south side of that uh, because the rail line runs right through there. And I think we planned that as uh, community commercial. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, I know I worked on this early in my career here over 15 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> and they had a um, is my recollection, they had a uh, they signed a, like a long term lease in the early '90s for like 20 or 25 years. It's leased land. They're not the um, they're not the, yeah. they're not the property owner there. Right. They just have a long term lease and quite a bit of investment on that property. Um, we have not, and to answer simply answer, but no, we haven't had any discussion about buying them out or relocating them. Um, uh, that's the short and simple answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I expect Mr. Jones may uh, may have some answers for me on those other maybe, maybe those other uh, issues. before I turn over to Mr. Jones, maybe a little bit of information in regards to Buller Avenue that I do know. You know. We've been working with Sun NP in regards to their planned area development application, which basically covers this area, you know, north of uh, this application, and obviously that does involve the connection or and the coordination of Bullard Avenue. The current plans have Bullard Avenue coming from this development, coming up, and going along the Buller Wash up to Yuma. And, you, and Lower Buckeye Road would then tee into that. But there's been a great amount of discussion about particularly how to do that, which one goes and which one tees off, how to do the, the bridge and the crossover over the Buller Wash. Uh, but there is, within the city as part of the Sun MP application, a lot of discussion about continuing make that Buller Avenue. Uh, to Yuma, so that is definitely going to occur, just a matter in which manner, is my understanding. Other than that, I'll turn the rest of the over to Mr. Jones. Sure, uh, for, before you leave, uh, uh, to kind of follow up on the bullet washing, and just forgive me for not really knowing this, but um, we've talked a lot about the bullet wash tonight and uh, having it as a green belt and its connection. Uh, are there any intergovernmental agreements? Uh, are, are there any uh, agreements with the developers as well as to how the bullet wash gets developed as a green bell and if that is the case is there any discussion on the development of bullet road as part of that green belt development mr. chairman uh, commissioner bay in regards to this particular application the bullet wash area is outside their property mm -hmm. uh, to, with the exception of a portion up in the corner where we may need some additional uh, dedication within the wash area but the wash as it exists today you know up along the eastern boundary is all actually I think ownership by the flood control district today uh, the improvement of that as an open space area you know I, I'd have to defer to Harvey for the regards to and, and you know, the, the coordination and the development of that. That, that whole that whole bullet wash around the airport's been channelized already, mm -hmm. uh, and from Lower Buckeye down. We we had a intergovernmental agreement with um, Maricopa County uh, Flood Control District, and it's uh, a phase construction, and we started from the south end, so it's it's already been channelized. Um, it's more of a and towards the southern end, it's not as, um, I guess the best word is, is inviting for mm -hmm. users because it, it, it's adjacent to industrial land uses. So as it goes north and where it's abutting residential, we're talking about, about making it more um, uh, green and open to uh, park environment for, for residential use. Um, so um, 
there is an incremental phasing. I think we're, we're getting ready. We're in the design of the, the second phase. So it's, um, and <clears throat> when we go north of the interstate, um, as part of the uh, West Corps um, development, they'll be doing that portion and uh, north of uh, West Corps um, in what is known as uh, Goodyear Plan Regional Center, or Rio Paseo. That's already been improved up there. So we're doing it incrementally. Oh, okay. Thank you. Just doesn't include the road. Mr. Jones. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Dustin Jones I'm from Snell and Wilmer. And I, I must say, Bob, you, you make my life easier and, and difficult because easier because you did such a very thorough presentation. You covered all the five slides that I had prepared. But then you also make my clients go, what do we have you here for? Because <laughs> <laughs> you've done all my work for me. But I wanted to take a little a bit of time and introduce uh, this project because it is an honor to be before you on behalf of uh, Rose Property Southwest as well as the Wood family who have been working on this project for a long time. With me tonight from my office is Karen Keith who has spent um, quite a few hours working on this project. Uh, we also have with us uh, Jack Rose who's with Rose Property Southwest as well as John Ruggieri who's the Director of Entitlements with, with the Rose Properties who's worked on this project as well. We also have the honor of having the r members of the Wood family present this evening. We have Margaret Wood Carl as well as Ken, who I believe is here, and then uh, Pug and Pauline, who are here. And I don't know who is the oldest or the youngest of the family, <laughs> but I would suspect that, that, that Margaret is the sweet sister amongst the group, regardless. Um, I can take you back a few years ago to my introduction to this project. Um, it was about three years ago when there was quite a few rumors going around about baseball coming to this area in the city. Not on this site, but on an adjacent site. And there was quite a bit of discussion, quite a few calls that the family was receiving at the time. I remember receiving a call to attend a meeting with Margaret where there had, was discussion going on about how to plan their site, what to do with the Wood family property. Uh, the property, as you may know, has been in the family since 1932 when their father, Ron, purchased the property to farm it. If you can imagine this area in 1932, it was a bit distant from downtown Phoenix and, and Goodyear was much smaller. And I believe Margaret told me at one time that the property where the Phoenix Goodyear Airport is located was sold by the family. That used to belong to the family as well and that was sold not to the airport but to the Navy at the time back in the 40s. So there's a lot of history for this property, the house where the children spend a lot of time is still there on Australia Parkway. A lot of history, a lot of uh, significance is, that this property had. Margaret, when she approached me, uh, was talking to me about many of the developers that were calling her that wanted to develop this site and do something. And I remember going over to her house uh, about three years ago. It was around Christmas time, and I had my four-year-old daughter with me. I remember climbing all over the kitchen table and eating nuts and things like that and disturbing Margaret's beautiful house and talking about the sentimental value that this property has to the family because of the history and how long it's been there. And they wanted to do something that would not just be another commercial develop development in the city, but something that the family could be proud of. It's a legacy property for them because it has such a history to the family and to the family trust. And so they wanted to do something right. So they looked for a development partner that would have a knowledge of the Southwest, that would have a knowledge of this area of the, of the, of the city and of the, of the valley, and want to also contribute and do something that would, would be of value and be of worth. And Rose Property Southwest was, that, was the developer that was selected to work with the family because there was a pre-existing relationship and pre-existing trust there with Jack Rose and the Wood family. Right around that time after uh, the family started working with, with uh, Jack on this project. John Ruggieri came to the scene and was hired probably about two years ago. And he hails from San Diego from Project Des Design Consultants, which is one of the, is the, if you see on your application there, is one of the principal planners that helped put together this application. John had significant experience there, has over 25 years of experience of doing development and projects in California and other parts of the country, and knows what he's doing. And so he came to this development with the experience and understanding as to how to get a project like this out of the ground. So there was about a year of time spent in doing economic analysis, uh, fiscal analysis, tra traffic circulation, trying to determine what the market would sustain on this site because of the family's desire to do something that would be an amenity, that would be, would be a legacy project that would have their family name on it here in the city of Goodyear. So a lot of effort went into that. About a year ago, after a year of analysis, was when we submitted our application in August of last year 
for this PAD application and began the review process, the first review and the second review process to uh, develop this application. Around that time, as you may know, the city center project was going along as well. And in the, in the desire to not get our project so far ahead that the idea and the concept of the city center would be in the background, we allowed for the city center project to catch up to our application because we could have been here quite a quite a few months ago. But the city center project process was one that the city really wanted to respect and allow for the commission. It's not, I think, a coincidence we're right behind the city center coming to you. It will be right behind it going to city council. That was the intention of staff to help you all to see the vision for this area because this is right next to what many feel is the heart and center of the city, which is the city center. But we believe this project is the breath of air that will give life to that city center. And so there is a significance there as well. If I can have some help with the Elmo, I will go breeze, breeze through, oh, this is probably what I need, breeze through my slides quite quickly, quickly here because, again, Bob has covered most everything that I would be covering. You can see, as the staff has indicated, the orientation of the site on the north side, the 57 acres, as well as the 187 acres to the south side. Staff has been very, very thorough in describing the proposed uses, the mixed-use development on the north side, and the business park type of development that could occur on the south side. Also has done a very, very good job of describing the development standards, the heights, uh, that would be permitted on the site as a matter of right and those heights that would be required to go through a use permit process to be able to go higher and the color notations there uh, describes the intensity as you move to the center of the site you get that greater intensity but you can see the slide describes our design philosophy this is a very pedestrian oriented type of development particularly on the north side of the project adjacent to the city center you can see the Goodyear Boulevard loop there on the north part that, that uh, dissects that portion of the site and allows for that other portion to be regulated by the city center specific plan, but also brings some of that life and activity down through the site onto our, onto our site. And then you see on the bottom portion, again, the business park element, as well as the commercial and the industrial as staff outlined. On that north side, again, to summarize the permitted uses that you see in your application, the site is intended to be a mixed-use type of development that has an, a residential element that would be above the, above the retail. There are also other types of multifamily town, road, urban types of dwelling opportunities on that north side. Office, restaurants, entertainment, very, a very active, active property adjacent to the city center and very consistent with the vision for this corridor. On the south, 185 acres, again, more of a business park type of concept. What you see here is a conceptual site plan that would show the intensity of the types of uses that would go along on this site. Uh, to note the the heights that are in the height development standards that are in the application, as staff has already indicated, along Australia Parkway, the, the height, maximum height that's permitted along Australia Parkway adjacent to the residential that's on our western side is only 35 feet. As you move away from Australia Parkway is where you allow for the verticality to occur along the site. Design guidelines. Because the project is, again, near the heart and center of the city, the importance of the aesthetics was something that was taken into consideration. And you should have received in your materials a design guideline book that's very, very comprehensive that outlines the standards, the de de development and design standards for this area. This, these design guidelines are unique, and we take much pride in them, that they actually don't just speak to general design guidelines for the entire project, but speak specifically to the MXD area, what design standards should occur there, the business park, the commercial, as well as the light industrial. The standards, very specific for each one of the sites, not just a general fluffy language that says do good quality work, but actually gets into specifics about the types of development or design standards you would want in these areas. Some of the questions that came up with are dealt with the Bullard Road as well as the Bullard Wash. I have to echo staff's comments. Um, Bob came in and, and, and came in at the very end and, and clarified what I was going to say is that we have had meetings with Sun and P with respect to the roads. Our project obviously will be completed to our property boundary, and Sun MP has a PAD application that they submitted about a month after ours in September of last year, and I believe they're coming to uh, close conclusion of that PAD, mm -hmm. and I believe there's a development agreement that's being negotiated, Harvey's nodding, that addresses the continuation of the road from their property line all the way up to Yuma Road. And so we haven't had any discussions about the road ending at our property not going anywhere because the understanding is both property owners have PAD applications that are processing concurrently and each property owner will be responsible for their road. There has been some discussion about the crossing over Bullard Wash and how that will work. I believe there are stipulations, there's language that will deal with that as well. 
and we are not objecting to anything at, at this point with respect to those discussions we've had with Sun and Pay, and they're not here objecting at all to what we've negotiated with them. But those discussions are, are ongoing. Uh, we anticipate we'll conclude those very, very promptly. Um, looking to see if there's any other questions or comments that I may have left out. Board North-South Collector. Um, Commissioner Horseman brought up uh, the desire to have a North-South Collector or the, the need for a North-South Collector between our North property and our South property. Uh, we are not aware of what the final site plan will be for Sun and Peace property in that area. I believe they have submitted an application to the city and their PAD and probably have a site plan that's being processed that has building elevations in that area, that little sliver that kind of comes in there. Um, we will have to work with staff on that and make sure that there is uh, the types of uses that would be appropriate and the types of connectivity that would be appropriate if a business park occurs there or as staff has alluded to the discussions that have gone on recently about baseball. And I failed to mention that back in January is when the city came and said we, we, we'd like people to respond for an RFI and see if baseball is a suitable use for your project. We'd already been in this process about a year by this time and hadn't thought of baseball. but. We put together an application and submitted uh, a statement of interest to have baseball potentially work on this site. And after a few months, back in March, as you may recall, the council took action and selected this site as a site for a potential baseball spring training facility in the city of Goodyear. And over the past six, seven months, there has been much discussion at, this, at the city management level, working with the teams, as has come out in the press recently, to do just that. Because of that, we we didn't stop our process because at this point no one knows that that's going to happen. We'd all like to cross our fingers and say yes, baseball will happen on the site, but we don't know that. But in the interest of protecting the family's interest to, to, to continue processing the zoning application, we didn't stop it and put it on pause to deal with baseball. We're here before you tonight with our application, which we think is a valid and viable application for this area. And if baseball occurs, as staff has indicated, stipulation 21 will require us to come back and do an amendment to our PAD and address how baseball works on this site. And we have no objections to that stipulation 21 and coming back and doing that. Because obviously at that point, if baseball is on the site, there's going to be a lot of detail that, that everyone on this commission as well as council is going to want to look at. So that amendment to the PAD would come back to the PNC and then on to city council at that time to address that concern. And then staff has also noted that stipulation 22 addresses the height concerns that, that the use, we will need to make modifications to our application prior to getting city council and that those use permits would have to occur in order to get the additional height. So we appreciate your time, appreciate um, you embellishing me and listening to the, the, the background and the history, but this is a very significant site for uh, my clients, the Wood family, as well as Rose Property Southwest. It's a significant property within the city, again, being that breath of air that will breathe life into the city center as the city center is kind of the heart, heartbeat and will give life to the downtown city of Goodyear. This is a significant site, and we appreciate your time and would request that you recommend approval to the city council this evening. Thank you. Questions from Mr. Jones, Mr. Gelser. Dustin, you, you talked about connectivity um, between the north and the south. If, if I'm just going to toss this one out, um, where if you look at either the 3.1 development plan, this one right here, um, I assume you would have no objection to extending the road right where it, where it comes up to the north and then makes an abrupt turn to the west. You would extend that road up into the Sun Chase plan so that you could hook up and they could hook up somewhere if they decide to build a road there or through that FL, F slash L dash one area. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Gelser, with the plan that you have before you, this plan here is what staff has supported to date with this development plan. The discussions about bringing baseball obviously brings another element of traffic onto the site. And in those discussions with staff about the potential for baseball, that's where Staff said you might want to consider a north-south connector coming up from where, exactly where you're saying and going north. In that context of baseball, we conceded that's probably a good idea because you're going to have a lot of people coming in and out of there for the activities. I, I, okay. And well, under that, that context, we, we've said yes, that probably is the best okay. way to deal with it. But I'm going to say if baseball doesn't come, do you envision any kind of connectivity between the north and the south? We, we haven't really explored it at length. I think one of our initial, initial uh, site plans may have contained that. And then 
were directed by staff to, to move away from that. So our initial submittal, Karen's nodding in the back, actually had that road going north, and then it was modified, and this is what was the final uh, side plan. Again, in, outside the context of baseball occurring. Um, can I ask staff to, Bob, could you come up and address? <laughs> Well, I, I'm just, I mean, I'm looking at it and saying, okay, there's an obvious spot for a linear road that comes straight down from Goodyear Boulevard South and, and goes through Sun MP and goes right into this project. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, why are you recommending against it? Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Gelzer, I, I, you know, I haven't been involved in all of the discussions relative to the Sun MP property, uh, but I do know that in some of the discussions, Sun MP is not desirous of having that connection. In their development plan, they propose no connector street going south. Uh, and I think the other part of it is, is based upon the overall land use plan, circulation plan within this development, I think the city did, did not see that it needed to be a connection, that Bullard Avenue provides the primary access north-south you know, within and through this development to Lower Buckeye Road. And there didn't necessarily need to be an internal connection between the two development pro properties between Bullard Avenue and Estrella Parkway. Okay. This commissioner disagrees with that assumption. Thank you. I'll end it there. Mr. Chair Mr. Chairman, no, the staff doesn't um, oppose a north-south connection. And, and, in fact, we talked about it. The, the, the issue is where is it going to be? and getting both property owners to agree on a location, which has been um, quite a chore to try to get them both to agree on the location of a north-south road. <coughs> so we don't oppose it um, well, in difference. I, I guess let me, let me put it this way. If the wood property gets approved first and there's two connectors, somebody's going to need to connect into it. Whether they put a squiggly line or a straight line through, that's their issue. Um, but I think we ought to be, I think that connector, there should be some kind of indication that there's a connector awaiting this PAD. See, council's going to ask that. And if they don't, I'm going to bring it up when it comes before. <laughs> my, my, my feelings is uh, the same. Uh, the more collateral circulation we can provide The density that we're talking about here is unique. And because we, if, if we don't put it in here and we need it, we're going to be stymied. If we just say the expectation on the, uh, the plans from Sun MP are that there will be a north-south connector. Um, I guess Todd will get the message by reading the, uh, the minutes or uh, watching. He's watching the... at home right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Todd. Uh, but that, <laughs> that, that would be, that would be a, quite frankly, that would be my expectation when that, when that PAD comes in is that there's a north-south connector. And I agree with Mr. Gelzer that if it's not there, um, you know, I think this applicant has, uh, has done 90% of what's needed. And there, in the north portion, you've got a north-south route and the potential to, con to, uh, to connect uh, just east of the sea on page 13 to... Uh, to provide that north-south access. Mr. Chairman, they, um, they're showing a north-south to the north of Lower Buckeye Parkway, but nothing to the south, so there wouldn't be anything to the south. So if, we, if you want one from the southern parcel of the wood up to through Sun MP, then you need to stipulate that near, near, they need to have a north-south collector. Well, and I, th and, and, and I think the, the, the discussions that we've had is, you know, this stuff is conceptual, so, you know, we haven't got a surveyor out here laying out where this road belongs, but I think uh, uh, I, w I would support a stipulation that uh, recommends a, uh, a north-south Mr. Chairman, if I could interrupt, I, 
I'm going to let John Ruggieri speak to this because I know he's, he has had meetings with representatives from Sun MP about these very issues about the connectivity. So I'm going to turn the time over to John to address some of this. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Gelser, um, the way that this plan shows the circulation uh, anticipates at the level of development that we are proposing according to the traffic study that we have prepared that uh, we meet all the city's uh, guidelines of level of service. We have been reluctant to make a connection to the north because we understand the type of development that we intend on developing. I have no idea of what's going on to the north of me, nor do I control the type of development, the land use, the intensity, nor the design guidelines. And so we do have a concern about integrating the two developments if we do not need an interior collector because we meet the level of service. If, however, we are directed to do so by stipulation or staff, we certainly would consider doing that. Uh, but I just wanted to clarify for you that we did go through the technical studies to address the issue. And uh, if we are to make that connection, I would hope that there would be some reciprocity to protect our interest in that transaction. The, the way I look at the, uh, the intervening par parcel is very much the same way that we've looked at interparcel access in the commercial projects along Litchfield Road and Estrella Parkway uh, that it just doesn't make sense to force people to go back out onto an arterial to go back into another commercial area. It's, it's, there's a safety issue, there's a traffic volume issue, the traffic study is all well and, and good that we've done that, and I appreciate the fact that your circulation plan does provide level of service at the intersections that would meet the city standards. But to the extent that we have an opportunity here, I certainly am sensitive to the fact that uh, I'm not sure that I want to have connection to something that may be box warehouses. Um, but I'm not sure what uh, Sun MP has proposed either. Uh, the staff is working on that. Um, my expectations and what they bring forward, uh, again, Todd, I hope you're watching, is that the project will be compatible, that the circulation will allow for collateral circulation, and that your interest will be protected. Can I make a, a follow-up comment? Um, I've attended most of the city center meetings, and Chairman Horseman, I know, has also. And one of the things that has been promised to the citizens who live south of Goodyear is with the development of the city center, um, are we going to have more and more traffic on Australia Parkway? Well, the promise has been from the city that the and for this whole project that most much of the traffic will be diverted up Bullard Avenue. Okay, so if traffic is diverted from Australia Parkway to Bullard Avenue, there is still no way to get from your project to the north part of your, to, from the south part of your project to the north part of your project or to whatever Sun MP is building that is between the two projects. And we're not going to allow development to happen that is two isolated islands that is not connected by some kind of, of, of linear path to get through it. It's just not going to happen. Um, and, and you are doing yourself a disservice. I mean, you have a fantastic project here. You have something that, that, that I have been trying to see at the city since I moved here. And when I saw this project and read what you're trying to do, it's like, wow, this is really great. Okay, this is, the, this is one of the key things that you need to do. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Gelser, uh, thank you for your comments and observations. As I stated before, uh, if you choose to put in the stipulation that directs us to make a north-south connection, we would certainly do that. 
Um, because we did not know nor could control that north-south connection, what we have done is we made the connection back out to Bullard, if you look at the circulation plan. If you direct us to go to the north, that would allow us that north-south connectivity through the projects that you, that you and we seek, and it would, in effect, mitigate our need to have that additional roadway come out to Estrella. So I would, I would ask that as you form the stipulation uh, that there is some flexibility in how we approach the connection, but we would seek uh, to make that connection uh, either at that point or at another point to be able to be successful going north to south and work with the uh, developer to the north of us. John, I, I don't want you to give up the connection to Australia. I think you need to be able to bring traffic in off Australia. I know this is this is going to take up, you know, a path of of a hundred feet, and it's so many acres, and we're going to lose some square footage. But I'm sure that it's going to make for better traveling, and for an executive to get to his business a lot easier. It, you'll sell it faster. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Uh, the uh, Mr. Only, only thought that I have on, on this discussion that we're having right now, and I guess we need to run this by staff as well. Uh, the importance here is that if we stipulate that that road runs north and south, then staff is obligated to work with Sun MP to assure that that occurs. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, I've, I've had uh, extensive meetings with Sun MP on this, and, and we they are agreeing to dedicate a right away, a north south right away through that middle piece to ensure connectivity to the south. What I need, if you want to ensure connectivity to the south, you need to stipulate okay. that a okay. road has to come up from the south because their development plan does not show one at this time. They do not intend to do it unless you stipulate it. So, um, I think baseball might require it, but That's, if baseball yeah. doesn't happen, then what you're saying is you want one anyway. We want it anyway. So yeah. um, if that's the case, then you need to require it. Okay. I've, I've handed a drawing to Mr. Jones if he wants to put it up on Elmo uh, if we and, and make some comments. One other thing is we don't need to get into the specifics of where that needs to be because it's it's very complicated because there's there's already two existing That's median openings right now. There's some other design issues that need to be taken into consideration. Sun MP's done lotting studies, and they've got even a site plan <laughs> between the two parcels. So that's where the rub is, and that's where the challenge is, is not so much is, is finding a location that works. But if you give us the direction, How do you, how do you want to, be, to stipulate? Do you want us, us to say there needs to be a north-south stipulation? through area F slash L dash one and leave it at that? That would be fine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to recommend that one, okay. the motion. Yeah. Jeez, is it a game <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> that was Sun MP and ID card. Any, uh, any other questions or comments? Closing remarks? No, Mr. Ryan, we, we support the stipulation with the flexibility to locate that road. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak? Family? I'd just like to say I was born on that <laughs> <laughs> 20 to 30 years ago. <laughs> you know, the name is really cool. We need a good corporate park in the Wood Corporate Center will be a great addition to the city of Goodyear. He could add that he was born on July 15th without any electricity or running water. <laughs> 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 you get a sense of the, of the sentiment connection to the property. <laughs> Absolutely. Last call for speakers. Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for commission dispense disposition. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we recommend approval of case 05 
200-0017 to request a rezoning of approximately 240 acres um, as the Wood Corporate Campus with 23 stipulations and the 23rd stipulation should be for a north-south collector road through area F slash L dash one. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and I have a second. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. One more step in the long road. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. Okay. Staff communications. Just a couple of announcements. Um, it's been kind of alluded to this evening. Monday, uh, this coming Monday, the 25th, the um, staff uh, has on the agenda, first item on the uh, regular agenda is um, council consideration of adoption of the city center area plan. Um, inviting members of the uh, uh, technical advisory committee to attend and will recognize their contribution. You're welcome to attend, of course, or you can watch it on uh, the internet. Um, Monday. Monday. Monday, the 25th at uh, 6 o'clock. The, the people that worked on it. The city center, yeah, the city yeah. center Not technical advisory. Center. Yeah. I think we have one in the audience this evening with us here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, some everyone knows. Um, we have a special meeting on October 4th. No, I'm, I'm, we're going to have a lot of meetings here coming up, so I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I get you all um, ready for the holidays, I guess. Um, <laughs> on the special meeting on the 4th will be our just our normal agenda items, because on our regular meeting on uh, October the 18th, <coughs> we will have the public hearings for our major general plan amendments. There are six or seven of them? Seven? And that includes the Sonoran Valley one. So um, that that the location of that meeting will be at Australia Foothills High School down in the Australia Mountain Ranch, which I'm sure um, the people that the two members that live in Australia Mountain Ranch will be happy. And we'll try to eat down there if yeah, there's a restaurant down there. <laughs> Come on over to my house, we'll barbecue. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Can you send us a map of that? You know how to get there? How to get to the high school? Yes. Oh, cool. You can't really miss it. But yes. On the left hand side, past the golf course. Well, I'll find it. It's little. Well, everything's down Google it. Google it. Yeah. Have the case. I think since most of the items, well, you know, Joe said one way we should meet up here, but I'm thinking the most of the items are down south, and we might as well meet down south and then go from there. I think um, so. Um, we'll get the logistics to you. So um, then we have um, another meeting November 1st. That's um, first Wednesday of the month. That's to handle the normal agenda items in November because at the regular meeting on November 15th, we'll have the second public hearing on the gen major general plan. I'm sure required to have two public hearings at two different locations. So the second uh, public hearings will be located right here. But that's um, when we'll vote on everything. Is that and that's, that's when action um, can be taken. Um, I also have, that's so that we have the first and the 15th, but as an uh, uh, but no, but there's more. <laughs> hey, <bonus. laughs> there's more. A hey, special bonus. Yeah, I, at the request of someone, <laughs> I won't say who, November 9th, it's been suggested that I have another public hearing just for the Sonoran Valley, since due to the size and magnitude of it. Um, and that would be down in Mobile, uh, down in Mobile Elementary Ooh. School. The 8th or the 9th? That would be the 9th. It's on a Thursday. Yeah. Should um, we all wear our jean shirts? You can wear whatever you'd like. You can um, pick your quad to get there. <laughs> well, what I was, um, we've tentatively, it's down in the school. We have, if we leave here, it's going to take, you know, an hour, 20 minutes, maybe, you know, depending nice. on when we leave, it'll probably be about an hour and a half to get there, an hour and a half to get home. So if you want to leave earlier and not meet at 7, maybe meet down there at 6, um, we'd have to leave 
you know, City Hall around, well, to be sure, 4.30 or something like that, if that'll work for you. Or um, So I see a lot of happy faces there with that one. <laughs> I think it's important you go down there and see, see it. Um, I mean, you really can't appreciate it. I, I got the opportunity to fly over it this past um, week yeah, we just in a helicopter the APS had. And, Let's do um, that. That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that's a lot better way to see it, by the way. Uh, um, so I think you need to meet the 120 residents uh, down there. And, and you know all them all, right? By name. I, I met some of them. I'm going to welcome them to Goodyear. Welcome to Goodyear. So that's November 9th. Uh, what, what's your pleasure in terms of the time? Would you rather have an earlier so you can get, get out earlier and come home earlier? Yeah. <laughs> I knew that would probably. I, I'm willing to meet. Is that a Wednesday? Wednesday. Thursday. 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 Will that work? We'll take the bus and we'll even feed you. Take the bus. Sandwich is on the bus, right? Sandwich is on the bus. <laughs> what? Well, we have to pack a lunch because there there aren't any restaurants down here. You said the October fourth meeting was a special meeting because of just load or. Yeah, because of the agenda. Because of the 18th meeting, we have seven of those major general plan public hearings, and if we um, if we have all of our items on the 18th, it will, we'll be here a long time. And that's why I'm dividing it up into two meetings, just to make it easier. Uh, Harvey, could you ask our the corp the commission secretary to send us an email with all the meeting yes. dates that are going on between now and the end of the year, so we can get them onto the calendar? Yes. And then, Thank you. Yes, and then a final one that com the, com um, the chairman asked me at, at dinner suggested, and I think that was a good suggestion, is a regular meeting is December 20th, but instead of December 20th, he suggested the week before December 13th, so we're not in conflict with um, any holiday mm -hmm. festivities. So um, if everyone's okay with that, we'll, we can do that. Yes. So we don't have one meeting in December. We wouldn't have a, we wouldn't need a, I, I would hope we would need another meeting in December. So, so that's um, two in October, three in November, and one in December. And then the conference. Three in October. What? And the conference. And the conference. Oh, and then the other issue is we have the um, no, Department of Commerce has its annual boards and commissions uh, training in Phoenix. And um, if you haven't signed up, sign up through Joe, that's and that's uh, Friday, November 3rd. You always go. And we'll drive you there. Includes, um, I think we start about 9 to 4, comes with lunch. It's usually pretty good. Uh, they have some good speakers. Um, so it um, gives you a, a good overview of some issues. So if you haven't signed up for that, I encourage you to do it. Also, if you want to join Arizona Planning Association um, and get the magazine and become a full-fledged member, um, card-carrying APA member, it's, um, you can do so and just let Joe know. <laughs> so other than that, um, we also have, um, that's, I think that's it, I guess. Um, unless you have any questions of me. That was probably enough meetings for a while. Yeah. Better work here, thank you. Excuse me, Harvey, is, is this an appendix to documents we already have, this city center? That is that is the final draft that is going to the city council for adoption Monday night. I thought you'd like uh, That's stop the plan plus amendments. Okay. Uh, that plus that, attachments. Right. Remember remember when we presented it to you, there was the plan and then we had this la laundry list of um, radish or changes. Mm -hmm. yes, you adopted yes, that? Yes. Uh, this represents incorporating all those changes uh, into this document, so that's the document we have. I think it's not this, really. No, this is just appendices. It says appendices. This is not the document yeah. itself. It says appendices, but. Appendices C through F. Just an addition. Yeah, yeah, we have it. not gotten the final, final plan. Inside but it says. The, will we get a copy when the city council? Approves it. It says, a spe it says specific area plan on the inside. Right, appendices C specific area plan, appendices C through F. This is uh, not the plan. Yeah, that's not the plan. You're right. It starts with. Right. Oh, you're kidding. That's not the right thing. What's that? <laughs> that's not, what that's not the right. That's not the plan. 
Okay. This is just the. I gave you the plan to have it copied to get remembered to get. I got the disk handed online. Anna said it was easy for her to get. That's not the plan. Okay. Do you want these back? We'll get it to him Friday. No, you can't have them. We'll get it to him. Okay. What is the part of This is part. This is part of it. We just don't have part A. Okay. All right. Packets goes out tomorrow. This says C through F. We need to. Did you call A and I? We call her the so we don't have A and B. We to get that. I don't have the plan and A and B. Okay. Yeah. So that's so okay. We know what it looks like. There's no A and B, and there's no plan. Well, that was supposed to be the plan. Let's okay. That <laughs> well, was a great plan, Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> If there's no further business, I will entertain a motion to 